क्या कैन गिव मी द माउस Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. Mullai Vandan Sai Maunika P Star Sugandini Virat Madhu Aryan Santosh Kiran and Tari Ken Roshan. Aap sabko swagat hai. Chai pe charcha free meet PG class for from Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. All of you. are having a big anxiety in your mind what is going to be the result of neat pg i know very well i am also quite anxiously waiting uh, um, what is going to be the neat pg result so doc let's start with the quiz today uh, in the physiology please unfreeze your fingers get on to the keyboard and start punching your answers for the today's quiz which is that nerve fiber the type of the nerve fiber that carries the pain is my question to all of you can you all punch whether the voice is loud and clear yes maunika is betting on c fibers c fibers any other bets absolutely right c fibers are the ones which carry the pain most of you are right tickling and itching basically is carried by which pathway is the examiner's question tickling and itching is carried by what is the pathway is my question to all of you yes uh thank you tarik absolutely uh we use we are using youtube the high density live broadcast where you you can see the teacher much more clearly than a face to face class so good um akash patak is our new classmate so you are betting between a versus b anterior spinal thalamic tract is the one which is carrying the tickling and itching which muscle band is covered by actin filament is the examiner's question 123 shoot your answer which muscle band is covered by actin filament is my question to all of you question number 123 shoot your answer doctor yes so 123 which muscle band is covered by actin filament paritosh is proposing h band madushri betting on h band absolutely h band what is the normal respiratory minute volume so all this spirometry doctor you have to be 100% sure we are going to have a very good discussion on spirometry yeah so normal respiratory volume how do you get the calculation of it by multiplying with what with what or dividing what with what pradeep monica akash patak everyone is betting on vandan a and b are not same b is saying tidal volume divided by respiratory rate a is saying tidal volume multiplied by respiratory rate so tidal volume into respiratory rate is what how to remember what statement is true about inspiratory capacity kya 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 add karne se aapko inspiratory capacity milega is the favorite question of the examiner question number 125 should you answer doctor so uh pradeep sai maunika mulai vandan uh everyone is betting on c tidal volume plus 
volume inspired forcefully so it is the tidal volume plus the inspiratory uh, volume by forced inspiration the combination become the inspiratory capacity always capacity mein do volumes mila hai to ek capacity ho jata that is what you need to remember sometimes more than two also now which is the type of situation that you see in placenta placenta mein typically oxygen is preferentially transferred from the mother to the fetus and wo hone ke liye what is that effect called as question number 126 paritosh is betting on double bore effect okay sai also sai maunika also thinks double bore effect so double bore effect is typically seen in the placenta is what you need to remember now deoxygenated blood kitta rahe to cyanosis dikhai dega so what is that value at which cyanosis is seen if the deoxygenated blood is falling below what level is the examiner's sure short question so manish is proposing more than 5 tripathi is proposing more than 5 pradeep reddy is proposing less than 4 and akash patak is proposing more than 4 so it is more than 5 doctor 5 is the who gets cyanosed fingers how many fingers you have in a hand 5 oh yaad rakho 5% is cyanosis deoxygenated blood 5% is cyanosis is what you have to basically remember now doc what is the site where respiratory rhythm is being generated is uh, my question to all of you divya welcome after a long time uh, so divya keep punching we are in the middle of the quiz so pradeep reddy is proposing d we discuss this point in one of our evening sessions what is the ventral respiratory dorsal respiratory uh, neurons etc etc so everyone is saying b versus c so it is a b pre bodzinger complex you should never forget soldier of mewar as usually is uh, very very strong 10 to the power of b to the power of 10 that's good now trob herring bays are typically seen in what situation trob herring's waves where do you see the trob herring waves are they they are related to respiration no doubt but is it the variation of cvp icp jvp or bp is a important uh, question so these are all single liners doctor favorite single liners of the examiner every day we will have a review of 30 single liners and agar aap zyada clean bold ho rahe to roz clean bold ho rahe to those topics aap fir ja ke u medico mein review karna so everyone is saying b i think pradeep strongly thinks it is a absolutely generally exam hall mein single liners mein i think i guess chalega nahi examiner will put a gun and ask you the question so a think karne ka question bhi nahi hai monica so fluctuation in the bp with the respiration is called as trop herring wave is what you need to remember the vasculature has a lot of segmentation arteries arterioles veins venules etc etc so maximum cross sectional area kisko hota hai which one has got the maximum cross sectional area is the examiner's question should you answer doctor yes uh 130 paritosh is thinking ye 
Chira Goel, very good, little late, but latest answer from Chira Goel is C. Shubham says Iota. Manish Vimal is saying Venul. Aizaz is saying Ayorta. So you should remember venules. Venules always means and venules are called capacitance vessels. They can accommodate as much blood as possible is what you need to basically remember. I am advising you, each of you put, uh, keep a paper on the side of you, right, while we are having quiz. How many wrongs I did in the 30 questions every day? Aap lagao, paper mein. Self-assessment. End of the session, batao, 30 mein aapka score kitna hai? Kitna aya? And if somebody is scoring 25 out of 30, why I am not scoring? I am only scoring 15. Agar, o prerana ke saath, agar aap pad sake to, I am very successful. All my effort of the evening is to do a granny mass, illiterate granny mass job to keep on telling you that what are the areas that you need to improve. Okay, doc. That's very, very important. Right? So, 15 seconds is the normal arm to tongue circulation time is what you have to remember. Yum glur 4 is associated with receptor, is associated with which kind of taste? I mean, sorry, which kind of taste? Laddu kahe to yum gur gur ho jayega, nahi to sour, bitter, una umami, uh, umami, oh, I don't know, umami is a kind of taste, uh, I know bitter, so, Krishna Saunya is proposing umami. Chiraz Goel also saying umami. Oh my god. Ha ha. What is umami taste? Upma kai to umami hota kya? I don't know what is umami taste. Okay. Now, which cells secrete glutamate? Cerebellum mein. Glutamate is a very, very inhibitory interneurons jo banate hai. Glutamate ka production karega. And. Uh, Glutamate fundamentally is produced by uh, Akash Patak Bolre MSG test. MSG kya hota hai? Monosodium glutamate. Ah, ah. Achha, monosodium glutamate dale to jo taste aata hai, wo umami taste. Ah? Okay, okay. That's good, that's good. Sometimes students also teach uh, classmates teach us, right? Good, good. So, in fact, you are all brilliant guys. Just what you need is, coaching is not really required except few concepts. What you need is inspiration to read every day, inspiration to finish 650 topics. And all my job is to add that element of fire in your belly, which is already filled with a lot of fire, I know that, right? Uh, so, uh, that's good. Granular cell is the one. Paritosh Jha, absolutely right. Now, excitatory neurotransmitter kya hota hai brain mein, which is responsible for excitotoxicity, which is the underlying cause for the neurotoxicity that you see in the motor neuron disease. So, which is that excitotoxin among the various neurotransmitters is my question to all of you. So, Rafael Putukudan, from Trivandrum is proposing, proposing uh, C, glutamate. Absolutely. All of you are rocking today with the wonderful answers, glutamate. In Sare Chizome, which is not a part of the basal ganglia, is my question to all of you. Yeah? Which is not a part of the basal ganglia. So, basal ganglia are those islands of grey matter with in the midst of the in the midst of the white matter and basal ganglia are important to work along with the cerebral cortex motor areas and cerebellum in order to finally control sugandini manesh vimal bhanu everyone is uh, betting on subfornical organ absolutely right subfornical organ 
is that part which is not having blood brain barrier is here you should remember gaba what is gaba gaba's main role kya hota hai 136 so i am very happy to see 68 online viewers very good so yes uh, what is your answer doctor uh, Apurva, Apurva is our new friend. Apurva, you are from which uh, location, uh, which city and what is your dream branch, Dr. Apurva Bajaj. So, uh, yes, yes, I said I will uh, share a link, uh, but uh, they had been too busy with uh, two really very sick cases uh, posted for angiogram today. So, I had been, uh, I could not get time at all. But still, end of the day before I go to home, I come to the class and then uh, deliver the class and uh, go home. At least if I can spend half an hour or one hour also with you guys, I am very happy across country you are all joining. So, my dumma marne ka chance nahi hai, chai pe chirka session ko, right? All our faculty are in uh, vacation mode. February first week se dusre faculty bola ki sir ab worry mat ho na hum regularly aake evening session take over karenge so until then I am saving the ship right so very good Apurva from Amravati excellent excellent Nature is from Scotland good good uh, yeah most of you are thinking inhibitory absolutely right brain ke andar which among this is a neurotransmitter? These are all FMGE questions, sometimes very easy questions. Cake whack, cake walk. Yes. So, Rehan is asking, where do you practice it? So, I have a large cross section of patients. So, once I had become more an entrepreneur, not getting time for managing intensive care, which is my favorite branch, most of the cases have been given over to most of our juniors who are consulting but still on a de bono basis I do consult whenever they have got any tough situation some of the old clientele patients also doctor you get addicted to them they are just like teacher student some patients without you they can't live so a DM cardiologist says that uh, no no you require a CABG but not a angioplasty Still that patient want to come and uh, meet, get reassured and uh, you have to tell them Aajkal jaysay hawaii jahaz mein aap baiit ke dilli mein do gante mein niklega Utna simple ho gaya hai Just ke hair cut it has become Then the patient is reassured Of course you need to evaluate with um, a double check Whether this patient really required CABG or not So that is very important doctor So what I am trying to tell you is, this is the best part of your life. MD mein aane ke baad, DM karne ke baad, jindagi become a running race for you. Right? So, enjoy this like a wonderful PG preparing student. Most enjoyable part. And take the challenges in a good spirit that uh, uh, if it is very easy, there are no problems. Everyone can crack. Then everyone will get the top top 10 ranks. There are certain barriers. The one who break those barriers selectively become selected to become the top. So I want you to be those guys. Okay. Now I can see most of you saying C versus D, Golgi versus bipolar. So granular, Parkinji, Golgi is sub hai, bipolar nahi hai. Right? Now Posterior, oh, answer is revealed. Eh? Prefrontal cortex, you should remember, contains the motor speech area which we discussed yesterday. That is the Broca's area. Now, uh, where is Broca's area located? Question number 140. Garma Garam answer the other way. Eh? Yes. Broca's area, where is it located? Uh, is a favorite question of the examiner. Right. 
Somesh, clean bowl. Yesterday only we discussed, Doctor. Somesh, I think, missed the yesterday class. So, Akash Patak is saying, Oh, Patak ji, see nahi hai. Broka, 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 broka. Danish Aiza Jindabad. That is inferior frontal gyrus. Is the Kali discussed here, na, Doctor? Huh? Now, flickering of the eyelids, what is that called as? One, once more a repeat question. Yesterday also quiz we had this question. Flickering of the eyelids is what? Right? Uh, flickering of the eyelids is myokinia. Balakrishna, absolutely right. Is basically called myokinia. Then, uh, inhibitory postsynaptic potential. How is it basically created? What leads to the formation of IPSP, where hyperpolarization occurs? Yes. Question number 142. Yes. So, Satya Snigha Tripathi is proposing chloride transport. Absolutely right. I think these are all the repeated questions of the yesterday's quiz, uh, which we already discussed. Young Helmholtz theory, Ishahara charts, color vision, etc., etc. So, doctor, today we discussed 23 questions. Pada pad bolo. Yes. Pradeep is saying, sir, uh, if I am having gap in between medical school years, like two years in between second and third year, then graduation done. Is it going to affect me in PG residency chances? No, not at all. Two years you can do medicine. After that, five years you can uh, go for uh, working with your daddy in his uh, uh, business. Once more, come back and then finish another three years. There is nothing like that. There is no rule that how many years you took to finish the medical school. You can finish. If you crack the top rank, according to the pure merit, you are being taken. That's all. So, Pradeep need not worry at all. Hum uh, sabko gaps hua tha, right? In the medical school. Now, doctor, let's go to the. Can you give me the scan? Now, let's go to discuss few concepts. Um, few concepts. So, this January, February month, mein, every day we will have session. Not a very long session. So, it is all warming. We are getting warmed up. To be in the game is all that is important. To be in the game is all that is important. Right? Paritosh is asking, sir, include image based questions. No worries. We will, from February onwards, every Wednesday, Dr. Vamshi there is going to discuss only the image based questions, exclusively a session of uh, 100 questions image based on every Wednesday. Right? So, no worries on that. So, until, until March 1st week, we will have a shorter session, one minute and a half hour. Let us warm up. By the time all the final years finish their exams, they will also join. So, yesterday, a group of final year students called and said, Sir, you have to do the same thing, so what is going on? Sir, we are having exam. At the same time, uh, uh, we will be missing all the uh, this thing. Just slow jaye bolke. They also requested. So, we will have a slow session. But every day we will have because for you guys, some of you guys, AIMS is very fast approaching. So that is the reason. Aapka approach kaise hona, doctor? Abhi hum January mein hai. May tak you should prepare as such, you are going to be in the top 30 ranks in uh, AIMS exam. Ohi dil mein laga ke prepare karna. Jitta katam kare karo. AIMS PGA name a katam karne ke baad, once more the second innings will start for you. Once more you keep December as your next stretch if you could not make and once more run around. 
examiner gives two chances two chances for you right now doctor <coughs> continuing our discussion on the various cerebral cortices cerebral lobes different areas of broadband which we had been discussing yesterday uh, yesterday's uh, ppt we have not yet finished it we were at uh, another question but anyway we will complete this prosopagnosia ka matlab kya hota hai prosopagnosia so anjaan marna kisi ka chehre ko agar aap pehchan nahi kar paaye to isko kehte hain prosopagnosia so you don't know who are you the patient will not be able to recognize your face that is called prosopagnosia uh this we finished uh, did we finish this no no or is it is deja vu for the uh, there is something called deja vu jamai swu so it looks very familiar i hope i have not yet finished this part of the class right ha huh. now <clears throat> ablation of somatosensory area 1 of the cerebral cortex what does it lead to it lead to the loss of tactile sensation localization and two point discrimination is what you have to basically remember chirag goel please download the uh, please download the you medico app discussion forum may it is already there so just uh, start uh, uh, expressing on the discussion forum in the you medico app yes uh, <clears throat> yes so doctor if you look at the brain occipital lobe is for the vision then post central gyrus is sensation pre central gyrus is the movement and typically in the area which is inferior frontal you have the judgment then you have the limbic system pepes circuit where the reward memory sensations are there and the pain is carried through the spinal cord and coordination is done by the cerebellum is what you have to basically remember now there are two somatosensory areas somato sensory area 1 where thigh thorax neck shoulder hand fingers tongue abdomen they are all carried by somato sensory area 1 somato sensory area 2 is the one which is carrying the sensory information of the leg arm and face this is what you have to be 100% sure about so if you take this map this is one map that should go and sit in your mind recently we discussed no all broadband area yesterday's class mein so this is a continuation of that area 1 2 3 what is this called as area 1 area 2 area 3 that is basically uh, called primary somato sensory area 1 it is called as then you have the 40 40 is called secondary somato sensory area 2 and uh, the broadman 5 and 7 they are called the somato sensory association area this is what you have to be very clear about let me tell you doctor neuroanatomy neurology khelte khelte sikh lena few things rehta hai हम पोस्टपोन करते गए तो ऑलवेज द रूल इज व्हाट फेस द रियलिटी इंस्टेड ऑफ रनिंग द वे फ्रॉम इट इंस्टेड ऑफ फीलिंग एंशियस अबाउट इट फेस द रियलिटी दैट शुड बी द सिंगल लाइनर इन योर स्टोरी कैन आई प्रिपेयर कैन आई रिमेंबर कैन आई नॉट रिमेंबर इन एग्जाम अगर एग्जाम में नहीं क्रैक किया तो क्या होगा ये सब उलझन को फैकेट in the dustbin go and face the situation so read those 650 topics 
play the quizzes on the U Medico app, bookmark on the notes, attend every day and play quiz with your classmates. You should be audacious, doctor, to face the reality called the PG entrance exam, which is a small stumble block before which you, you will cross anyway. Right? So neuroanatomy is one such stumble block. Face it, chase it, and then kill it. So, doctor, this is the primary somatosensory cortex, and it is in a close relationship with the thalamus. Thalamus is the place where all sensation going up, the pain, temperature, touch, vibration, everything will ultimately get reported in the thalamus. And from the thalamus, they will all get related to the primary somatosensory cortex. So the touch, proprioception, nociception, temperature, they are all the somatic sensations. From the receptors in the periphery, they reach the spinal cord. And uh, anterolateral spinothalamic tract carries them all the way to reach the thalamus. From the thalamus, they reach the primary somatosensory cortex is what you have to remember. Touch and proprioception reach the spinal cord through gracile from the spinal cord up to the uh, medulla. They reach as uh, gracile and cuneate tracts. From there, they become the medial lemniscus and ultimately reach the thalamus. So, this is what you need to remember. Can you give me the uh, board, please? Once more. Let me reinforce to you that in the brain, in the brain, typically there is a post uh, central gyrus which is called the sensory area. Then you have the pain receptor. Touch and vibration receptors. The pain receptors reach the spinal cord and uh, from the dorsal horn, they immediately decussate to the opposite side, they become the anterolateral spinothalamic tract. They send up and reach the and reach the lower medulla, and from medulla they will ascend up. And ultimately reach the thalamus, and from thalamus they get relayed into the somatosensory area one. Then the touch and vibration, they reach the dorsal horn, and they ascend up as cuneate and facile, uh, uh, gracile and cuneate tracts. They reach the lower medulla ipsilaterally and from here they go contralaterally to the opposite side, the deficit there and they are carried as medial lemniscus, medial lemniscus and they also reach the thalamus and from the thalamus they go to the somatosensory area. That way this somatosensory area has which order neurons? The first order neurons are between the receptor to spinal cord. I mean, the first order neurons start from the, uh, from here to here. From there, they are carried by the cuneate and gracile tracts. And from there, they are carried by medial lemniscus. From there, they are carried to reach the sensory area. So this is how the journey is what you have to ultimately remember. That's right. Paritosh says all sensations are being reported to the thalamus except the smell. Olfaction jo hota hai thalamus ko batane ke binya hi chale jata hai. So if you look at the different areas whenever you are getting touch, you are getting the pain or vibration, etc, uh, etc. Et they are all represented on the somatosensory cortex with a sensory human killers, just like motor human killers. Is my kiska representation jada hai? Our face ka sensations are very, very important if you want to be romantic. Then ultimately, your 
khan ka sensations must be very accurate if you want to be a good surgeon so they are maximum represented is what you need to remember so once more the face the hand have the highest amount of representation in the middle sensory cortex in the humunculus is uh, what i like to underscore to all of you so you have a motor cortex you have a somato sensory cortex if you compare the two both in motor cortex and somato sensory cortex the face and the palm have the highest amount of representation is what i want to ultimately underscore to you somato sensory cortex lesion what does it basically lead to is a favorite question of the examiner it helps you to localize localization where is the stimulus is identified because of the somato sensory cortex so where is this somato sensory cortex is located doctor in which lobe typically the parietal lobe is the one which is containing the major part of our sensory cortex is what need to be remembered so it is the 3 2 1 which is called the primary somato sensory cortex aur ek bar batao 3 2 1 basically are carrying primary somato sensory cortex and somato sensory association areas 5 7 39 40 the somato sensory association areas out of that 5 and 7 especially are very important for stereognosis stereognosis means basically you know the depth of the sensation is a stereognosis and uh, you know the contour of an object placed in your palm which areas are important 5 and 7 are very very important so when will you basically use uh when will the parietal region most used when will the uh, parietal area region is having a lot of somato sensory area when is it most used for example if you are catching something lot of times we see the bowlers some bowlers jump karke usko pakdega like an eagle cricket mein kuch logo haath mein aane ke baad niche dekh leta niche rehta ball so while you are catching or throwing this parietal lobe stereognostic ability differentiates one fielder from the other fielder in the cricket is what you have to remember so any sensory modality starts at receptor and it ultimately reaches through the ascending sensory pathways to reach the thalamus from thalamus to the sensory area in the brain is what you need to remember now this receptor for also very special we had a one mnemonic video on different uh, receptors pacinian meisner's etc free nerve endings what do they do rough knee end organs etc they are modality specific agar ye pain hai to pain hi carry karega touch ko nahi touch karega but some receptors are stimulated by more than one sensory modality and that is the speciality of the free nerve endings the only receptor with multi modality capability then you have some receptors which are mechano receptors pacinian carpal rafni end organ merkel's disc or mnemonic video hai in the youtube video library please review that deep pressure sensitive fast adapting are pacinian deep tension sensitive slow adapting are rafni superficial sensitive to deformation of the skin and slowly adapting will be the merkel's disc that is the story of mechano receptors you also have meisner's cross endings hair end organs and free nerve endings among mechano so meisner's once more superficial and sensitive to the sideways movement is what you have to ultimately remember if you keep an object in the palm the patient lost an appreciation to the size and shape of that object which lobe if it is affected typically this kind of a clinical presentation will be there or which tract if you take 
Tractus cuneatus and gracilis. Both of them carry the touch and vibration. But upper limb jo hota na, hand ka hota upper limb. Upper limb se cuneatus carry karega. Lower limb ka gracilis carry karega. A man loses his right hand in an accident. Four years later, he develops a severe pain in that missing hand, which is called the phantom limb. So, what is the mechanism for the phantom limb is the examiner's question. So, uh, please give me that. So, fundamentally, your amputation, what did, the, what did it lead to? What did the amputation, which uh, side limb uh, have you amputated, doctor? Right hand. Uh, yes. So, typically, let us say, in the cerebral cortex, there is a place where the amputated limb is represented. Now, that limb, for example, you are having the forearm, elbow, then arm, and then hand. Let us say, middle of the arm you have been amputated. When you are amputated, this part which is represented here in the brain is becoming vacant. When it gets vacant, immediately what happens? The remaining areas which are adjacent to that, they will all occupy this area. So that means the remaining areas may any touch also, they have a greater area to report in the brain. And uh, because this area which was earlier uh, reported by the sensations from the amputated part, now, after amputation, you don't have that part, but still that area is there, and that area is taken over by Kabza Kardia. Real estate may language may call it Kabza Kya. Baju wale Kabza Kardia. Is liye kya ho gaya? So the hand is amputated, still the remaining part got an increased expansion, and that is the reason in the area supposed to be the hand, continuously the brain is feeling the pain which is called as phantom limb is what you have to remember. So, orthopedics ke bhasha me phantom sensation, phantom pain, stump pain, deficient malamona. Phantom sensation is a non-painful sensation of that missing limb. Phantom pain is painful sensation where the limb existed. And stump pain is the pain which is restricted to the amputated site only in that stump, that is stump pain. So how do the people with phantom pain report the pain as is a very important thing. Yes, Monica rightly says the law of protection. Cramping, shooting, stabbing, burning, that's how the patient will be reported. Unfortunately, 50 to 80 percent of the amputees feel the pain in the missing limb. But uh, over a period of time, they will be able to overcome. So when they have done uh, studies in the monkeys, did PET scan on the people in the brain, they found that there is a reorganization of the entire sensory geography after the amputation has been done, which is considered to be the underlying cause. So after you have removed, for example, this hand, that particular area which was early in receiving the sensations here, the other part of the limb will take over that area and get a larger expansion, which is the underlying cause of the phantom. Now, setting up of a posture before a planned movement. So, all modern activities planned. So suppose I have to deliver a class, not a quiz, but a class. First I have to get up from the chair, then I need to set myself ready, and then I need to present. So setting the posture before a planned movement is done by whom? 
by the premotor cortex. So, premotor kya hota hai? Motor kya hota hai? Pura motor mein kitne areas hai? Ye sab chize abhi hum baat karenge. So, where is the motor area basically? It is the posterior frontal area which is precentral is called the motor. A motor cortex may four types of motor cortex are there. Primary motor cortex, pre-motor motor cortex, Broca's area and frontal eye field. If I say you have frontal eye field, once more in the frontal lobe, pre-motor cortex and then primary motor cortex, this is how the entire motor area has been divided and inferior frontal area may, frontal lobe may, you are having the Broca's. So, this is the structure, story of the motor area. Thick hai. Magar, itne saare divisions kyo ho na? Iska each ka function hai kya? Pre-motor versus motor mein kya parak hai? These things you have to be very sure. Like a, some of you are going to be future neurologists, right doctor? So, that's the reason. My job is to equip you, remind you. Aap kis ke liye paida hua? Mahan admi banne ke liye. You are going to be a top doctor and dream to be the one who is in the heart of every patient, right? So, being a doctor, being a doctor itself is the highest level of richness in the world. Doctor. You are rich in heart, right? There are people who believe you and give their bodies for you to get examined and they agree with what is your decision. And they like to be treated with chemicals, with your knife. Already you achieved that exalted position like the Pope of the Vatican. So that is the reason you should already be contented that yes, I am being born. Millions were born on the same day, same year. But I am the one who had been chosen to become the doctor by destiny, by the plan of the God. And that's the spirit with which you should prepare for exam. You should not prepare like uh, a uncertain, uh, uncertain uh, student, be very sure, right? So, primary motor cortex, it is located in the precentral gyrus of the frontal lobe of each hemisphere. It has a large number of cells called pyramidal cells and they are the ones which control the skilled voluntary movements of our skeletal muscles is what you have to remember. Then premotor cortex. Premotor cortex jo hota hai, motor ke aage rehta hai. By the very definition. Kuch repetitive patterned skills rehta na doctor. Uske liye premotor cortex ka jarurat padega. Typing. Typing does not require uh, your uh, conscious feeling. Piano, etc, etc. So, first girl in the college when you are proposing the roles, after motor cortex calm karega, iske liye there is skill hona hai. Then after that your second boyfriend, second girlfriend, third boyfriend, third girlfriend, as you keep dumping in the life, after pre-motor dek lega. Because now you have become like a type, a typist or a pianist to give a cyclostyle dialogue on a candlelit night. So, that way, remember, जो रोटीन वॉलेंट्री होता है उसके लिए प्री मोटर जो स्किल्ड वॉलेंट्री होता है मोटर इज व्हाट यू हैव टू बेसिकली रिमेंबर सो डॉक प्री मोटर बेसिकली कंट्रोल सेवरल मसल ग्रुप्स सो दैट सीक्वेंशियली द मोटर एक्टिविटी इज बीइंग डिलीवर्ड सो Pre-motor actually works with the motor in planning the movement and it controls the voluntary actions which depend on the sensory feedback because it has a good connection with the sensory area. Oh, pre-motor puchega, post-central gyrus mein kaun hai? Sensory baita hai. Pre-central mein motor baita hai. Motor ke saamne kaun baita hai? Uh, pre-motor baita hai. So, pre-motor phone karke bolega, re bhai, sensory kya hal ho raha hai? Sab, 
कि आदमी बहुत रफ सरफेस के ऊपर चल रहा है सर बाजू में वैली है सर बोल के फोन करेगा अच्छा प्री मोटर कॉटेक्स सुन लेगा सुन के मोटर कॉटेक्स को बोलेगा भाई ये गिर जाएगा तो इसको परमिशन दे दिए तो भागने का तो परमिशन न को देना भागने का बोल के प्री मोटर विल टेल टू द मोटर इज वॉट यू टू रिमेम्बर सो इफ दिस प्री मोटर इन द फ्रंट लो इज इंजोर्ड देन वॉट विल है the motor skills in that particular area where even in the premotor also there is a representation hamba ka area face ka area limb ka area etc so that get affected but you don't get paralysis that is a fundamental difference and uh, i'll give you a simple example this you have to very clearly understand you have a central sulcus before that pre central you are having the motor post central you are having the sensory motor ke samne kon hai you are having the pre motor now what is the difference if the motor is affected you get decreased strength weakness unable to lift the arm paralysis se sab aata hai but if premotor area is affected strength will be normal weakness will not be there but execution of the motor activity jo rehta na wo nahi ho sakta that doesn't happen so the guy who was driving forgets how to drive if the premotor is affected but if he relearns how to drive since the strength is not affected he can be able to drive that is the speciality of pre motor cortex is what you have to basically remember very good monica is uh, now getting uh, enthusiasm sir motor association ka kya kaam hota hai so in sensory cortex you use the words like sensory association areas motor mein since they don't want to use motor association samjho ki pre motor ka naam more or less it will do the similar thing what uh, association areas do in the sensory cortex is what you can remember then you have a frontal eye field so frontal eye field the four areas i told motor premotor brocas frontal eye field so voluntary movements of the eyes jo hota hai ab left dekhna right dekhna right dekhna left dekhna ye sab cheeze hote hain na they are all controlled by the frontal eye that is the reason if the frontal eye field uh, is affected what will happen the ice goes into a constant deviation and what will be the type of deviation the ice going to if your right frontal right frontal get affected your ice will be looking towards your right uh, frontal the side where the infarction is there they will be looking towards it that is a conjugate deviation of the ice will occur in the patient will be looking towards the side where the uh, frontal lobe got affected whereas the conjugate deviation of the eye is also seen if you have a lesion in the brain stem because in the brain stem may you are having mid brain may all extraocular muscles are there pons may abducens hai iske wajah se deviation hota magar brain stem mein agar lesion ho gaya to the eyes get deviated away from the side where the lesion is suppose my right brain stem has a lesion my eyes will be looking towards the left to a conjugate deviation whereas my right prefrontal visual field is affected frontal visual field is affected my eyes will be looking towards my right that is what we have to basically remember so what's the main function of frontal eye field why do we need a conjugate 
movement of the eyes ka voluntary control when our uh, brain stem can uh, create the conjugate movement why do we need the brain so we need to look quickly at something uh, when that is a moving target aap reading room mein padh rahe ek sundar bandar nahi sundar uh, क्लासमेट जूनियर आ गया है रीडिंग रूम में नहीं तो हैंडसम हंक गाय फ्रॉम अनदर मेडिकल कॉलेज केम टू ज्वाइन द सेम रीडिंग रूम आप पढ़ना बंद करके टिंग यू विल बी लुकिंग एट दैट पर्सन राइट रीडिंग रूम क्यों जाते हैं पढ़ने के लिए जाते हैं क्या नहीं आवर टाइम आल्सो वी डिड नॉट डू दैट योर टाइम आल्सो यू डोंट डू दैट राइट सो पढ़ना बहाना होता है सो वाइल अंडरलाइन थक will be watching will be watching will then once more you will get your uh, uh, nostrils get so habituated to that particular perfume that sometimes while you are underlining and seriously studying the perfume will make you to lift the head and have a conjugate movement who is telling you pre frontal lobe is telling you i mean the frontal i feel is telling you please don't touch it so doctor so uh patient is able to recognize a person by name but not by face so bibi ka naam hai sita mahalakshmi sita mahalakshmi aa gaya bole tha mahalakshmi aage kya kya baat hai to so, baad mein sab log chale gaye to wo sita mahalakshmi ko dekh raha hai magar he is unable to recognize that he is she is his uh, sita mahalakshmi so recognized by name but inability to recognize by looking at the face कुछ लोग के लिशन में ये दिक्कत होता है इसे इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऑफ दी एग्जाम सो लेट इज क्रैक दिस कोड यस इट इज अ टेम्परल लोब चलो टेम्परल लोब के बारे में 10-15 पॉइंट्स गर्मा गर्म पढ़ेंगे टेम्परल लोब का फंक्शन क्या होता है हमारे दिमाग के अंदर विजुअल मेमोरी what we look we remember longer when you see a surgery real time you will remember it longer then memory long term storage of the sensory input if i ask you in school days when was your first kiss you still remember the touch of that first kiss in the school days sir, because of the long term storage of the sensory inputs in your temporal lobe then processing of the sensory input hum sunte auditory hum dekhte vision vision visual and we smell olfactory and we taste gustatory and we recognize and comprehend the language and we identify the categorization of the various stimuli this is deep touch this is pressure this is uh, etc and uh, there is a emotional response to every stimulus all this kaha processing hota hai temporal lobe is the one which you need to basically remember so a temporal lobe may be broad main area se examiner's favorite question so doctor there is a superior temporal lobe middle temporal lobe inferior temporal lobe that is how you divide the temporal lobe into superior middle and Inferior. 41, 42, 22. There are the areas in the superior temporal lobe. The primary auditory area, जो होता है, that is area 41. Area 41. Bookmark this point. Need to be the examiner, aims examiner. आपको पकड़ के पूछेगा, भाई primary auditory area का bro, bro, uh, Broadman number मालूम है या नहीं? तब मैं गेस करूंगा मैं थिंक करूंगा मैं आइंस्टीन बनूंगा एग्जाम हॉल में बोले तो है 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 नो 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 यू नो अनदर 10000 आर रेडी टू आंसर इट एज एरिया 41 कंपटीशन इज रूथलेस एंड अनलेस यू आर स्ट्रेटजिक फोकस्ड क्लियर व्हाट एग्जामिनर वांट व्हाट कैन आई डिलीवर इफ यू आर वेरी श्योर इन इक्वेशन विद एग्जामिनर यू विल क्रैक द एग्जाम लेट मी टेल यू वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट इट डज नॉट रिक्वायर अ बिग ब्रेन इट रिक्वायर फोकस What to not need is a big question, doctor. Let me tell you. 
आप पूरा पार्क में थाउजेंड पेजेस लिए तो हार्डली वन फिफ्टी पेजेस पढ़ना है एट फिफ्टी पेजेस फाड़ के यू हैव टू पुट इट इन डस्टबिन आई विल टेल यू I will. I may not be very successful to teach you those one fifty, but I will very sure to be successful to tell you what are those eight fifty pages that you have to tear and throw them out, not even look at them, right? Because one fifty pages you are already brilliant to study, but what is preventing you to study that? The remaining eight fifty nonsense in the book, which is never tested, which is hardly tested, that is the one you have to know. For that, you should come every day to. Chai pe charcha with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj on every day evening. I am completely jobless, and my only job that I am best is to teach you. Right now, the superior temporal law melody, pitch, sound intensity. There are two kinds of competitions in medical college. All of you know very well. एक सुरदास प्रोग्राम होता है दूसरा है बेसुरदास सो नाइंटी परसेंट ऑफ आवर क्लासमेट्स यूज टू बी चैंपियंस इन बेसुरदास माइक लेके पूरा एम्पलीफायर टूट जाता सो जो कुछ लोग सुरदास होते कुछ बेसुरदास होते कुछ लोगों को पिच मालूम नहीं पड़ता मेलोडी मालूम नहीं पड़ता इंटेंसिटी मालूम नहीं पड़ता आ को आ बोलेगा राइट so that is all because of the superior temporal lobe is what you need to basically remember <clears throat> middle temporal lobe here you have the language function which is being processed and uh, broadman area 21 is what you need to remember then inferior temporal lobe a broadman area 20 hota hai and uh, uh typically high level visual processing recognition kisi ko ramu ko deke to ramu bhimu ko deke to bhimu kaise pata chalega all the visual processing happening in the inferior temporal lobe then you have the primary auditory and association primary olfactory and association and visual recognition and association memory emotional social everything inferior temporal lobe is the most important adda and you need to remember broadman area 20 is what you have to basically remember <coughs> so if you look at the <coughs> hierarchical sensory pathway the primary sensory neuron that is the sensory neurons which give you all the somatic sensations secondary auditory and visual cortical areas they all reach the lateral temporal cortex and they terminate in the temporal lobe the visual if you take it travels to inferior temporal gyrus auditory will go to the superior temporal gyrus so auditory is superior visually is inferior temporal gyrus and uh, <coughs> the secondary auditory and visual are towards your temporal pole is what you need to remember from here where do they go to all sensory important visual auditory sab kuch aa gaya aap music sun rahe hain aur chitra lekhan kar rahe hain aur vision mein beautiful things are before you that should all ignite your emotional response right so there is a reason amygdala hippocampus they all are very well connected to the superior medial middle and inferior temporal gyrus is what you have to basically remember so that is the reason if somebody gets seizures in the temporal lobe so there is no visual or auditory input he feels that something is smelling oh my god some uh, sound is coming oh, all hallucinations dijavu jamaisu wo sab kyon aata hai because normally for the vision for the auditory for the processing to happen and going to your emotional system the limbic system 
कहा हो रहा है प्रोसेसिंग इट इज ऑल है टेम्पोरल लोब एनी टेम्पोरल लोब सीजर्स विल लीड टू All these uh, things without actual sensations, you start feeling the sensation is what you have to remember. Then dorsal auditory pathway. So this has an important connection with posterior parietal cortex, and it enables the location of the sounds in the space, and it promotes the orientation and the uh, initiation of the movements related to the sound. That's the reason the people who are blind by birth, their auditory localization is so perfect that they can be able to virtually see the things even in the dark because of the uh, auditory capability. So, doctor, um, this is in short a quick story of uh, how our sensory cortex basically functions. Now, uh, Kluver Busi, one of you is mentioning Kluver Busi syndrome. What is this basically? Bilateral destruction of the amygdaloid body and the inferior temporal gyrus. What does it lead to? It leads to visual agnosias, placidity, hypermetamorphosis, and looks like elephant, and hyper orality, everything they put in mouth, and hypersexuality. That is the typical. Uh, problem in uh, Kluver Busey is what you have to remember. Now, doctor, which cells projected to the pile surface is the examiner's question. Pahla, how many type of cells are there in cerebral cortex? What is the histology of the cerebral cortex? That is what examiner's question bank is having in the uh, in the server. You have to Hack the server of the examiner, right? Now, you have Bedge cells, Martinotti cells, Stellate cells, etc. Bed cells are the ones which reach all the way, leave the cortex and reach to the um, higher surface. So, let us talk about each of them. Pyramidal cell, fusiform cell, granular, stellate cell, horizontal cell of Kijal, and cell of Martinotti. These are the ones. Which are the typical cells of the cerebral cortex? One, two comments about each of them. Now, pyramidal cells kya karega? They are the main principal motor output of the motor cortex. They have long axons, they leave the cortex, they go to the other cortical areas and to the various subcortical areas. Then, stellate, they are also called granular cells. And uh, they are typically small and multipolar, and uh, the short axon of the stellate do not leave the cortex, and they are mainly the principal interneurons of the cerebral cortex. Then, cells of Martinotti, the Italian histologist, they are small polygonal cells, they have few short dendrites. And they form synapses with the pyramidal cells is what you need to remember. Then fusiform, they are spindle shaped cells. They are very similar to pyramidal cells. And uh, you have horizontal cells of Kajol. They are also called the regius Kajol cells. And uh, they are typically prominent when the brain is under development in the fetal life and they disappear after the birth. That is the various comments on the various types of cells in the brain. In the neocardics. Where is the vomiting center located? This many times we discuss in the medulla. So, classically, there is a chemoreceptor trigger zone area, prosthema in the fourth ventricle, vomiting center in medulla, then the labyrinths, your stomach, higher cortical centers, chemoreceptor trigger zone, sub RK vomiting center ko bole to, wo vomiting initiate karega. So, that is what you need to understand. How are the pyramids formed? In the lower medulla, they are formed by the lateral corticospinal tract is the one which typically forms the pyramid. So, if you look at the lower part of the medulla, doctor, you have the fourth ventricle. And what are the classical histological structures in medulla? You will not forget inferior olivary nucleus and the pyramid. So, a pyramid kya hai? 
what is this pyramid what is it made up of is the question of the exam can okay, you give me the board so doctor <coughs> So, in the brain, you are having the pyramidal cells of beds. Pyramidal cells of beds. Usse vaha se shuru hone wala tract ko kute hai. Pyramidal tract. And where is the journey of this pyramidal tract? It is reaching the spinal cord in that you are having the androhorn cell ko reach hone ki koshish kar hai. Isliye it is called corticospinal tract. It is the other name for the pyramidal tract. And why it is called pyramidal tract? Because there are the pyramidal cells of beds where it is originated. From there, when it is passing down, it passes through what is called as internal capsule. Then it passes through the brain stem. So, ipsilaterally through the midbrain. Ipsilaterally to the pons, ipsilaterally to the lower medulla, and lower medulla may go opposite side may decusair ko jayega. Jab decusair ko ga, vaha o bundle jo form ko da hai, isko kete hai pyramid. It's called pyramid. Where is it located? In the lower medulla. And these, they descend down and go and uh, innervate the antrophon. Until this point, it is called upper motor neuron. Agar pyramidal cells of beds in the motor cortex, internal capsule, or the brain stem, anywhere if it is affected, it is called, or while it is descending down the spinal cord until it is reaching the antrophon cell, that is still called pyramidal tract and upper motor neuron. From the antrophon cell, you call it as lower motor neuron, is what you have to remember. So that is all the story, doctor. So pyramids, they have the corticospinal tract and they cross to the opposite side of the brain at the decusation of the pyramids. Then you have the olives here, olivary nuclei. And uh, what is the importance of olive? There are ascending tracts bringing vibration, pain, touch, etc. No? So once they reach the lower medulla, this olive picks up that information and sends to the cerebellum, especially proprioceptive information. From the medulla, it will be sending to the cerebellum, to the inferior cerebellar peduncle. And that is the purpose of the inferior olivary nucleus is what you have to remember. So, doctor, with this, we will call it a day. Tomorrow, enjoy the Republic Day that gave us the constitution which gave the power to convert a all India exam into a need PG exam and need PG exam from a multiple days into a single day, right? So, you are all powerful doctors, powerful citizens knowing the law, right? So, enjoy, but still, uh, tomorrow evening we have a class, 4 to 6 we have a test and 6 to 8 we will have a discussion. So, if you want to know the schedule of the subject test on every Saturday, please review the schedule which is available. Please download it. Right now. And um, once more on Sunday, we will have a grand test and discussion. Most likely on Monday, we get the neat PG results. No problem. But don't loudly cry or don't get a heart attack when you see you are a topper. Anything can happen. Competition is relative. We are only the means and the plan, big plan of the God. So, with that confidence, enjoy a wonderful time. Thank you very much. See you all tomorrow at 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. 4 to 6 will be the subject test. Thank you.